Hello, this is Hawk and the Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Adventure Tim Watch Be on Any Cake. That's a funny as heck idol. <laughs> Early Adventure Time episodes, the Ice King kidnaps Wire Princess, a vaguely humanoid heap of scrap with a smiley face painted on its head, which he obviously made. Finn wants to stop him on the principle of kidnapping being bad, while Jake argues that since his victim is an inanimate piece of junk, no one's getting hurt and might even quell his kidnapping thirst. After a series of shenanigans, Ice King attacks Jake, at which point Wire Princess speaks, revealing that not only was she alive, but could say to the kidnapping as well because of Ice King's fluffy beard. But now that she has seen him attack Jake, another fluffy thing, her heart is wavering and she must journey alone to find the true meaning of fluff. The end gag is Ice King screaming, SHE WAS ALIVE?! Middle Adventure Time Episode Rag the Princess's kingdom is being attacked, and the assailant is revealed to be none other than Wire Princess, whose quest for fluff has turned destructive. She reappears excessively distraught by this. It's revealed that she created a wire and Rag the Princess, then known as Cloth Princess, and a recreation of the monkey experiment to best gauge her true ruling in the early days of the Candy Kingdom. However, when the Wire Princess AI realized the Candy people were more driven to Cloth Princess is Airing nature, it logically concluded the only biological need of candy people is fluff, and so tried her best to imitate Cloth's behavior. But the Cloth Princess deeply ingrained love for her citizens caused her to attempt to physically care for them, declaring the experiment a failure. PB Mind wiped them both, gave Cloth Princess a new kingdom and name, and put Wire Princess in sleep mode, as well as left her in the Ice King's junk pile. Jake, who has been listening, says, PB, that's messed up, man. Oh, they deliberate. While they deliberate whether to reboot her again, she ends up being smashed by a gumball guardian or something while everyone stares in shock. Well, the Raggedy Princess says, that's messed up, man. and also I didn't have time to say this earlier, but I'm fine with either Raggedy Princess or Cloth Princess. So yeah, and I'm going to call the cleanup for crew. <sighs> Late Adventure Time um, episode. A strange techno-magical maze appears out of the blue in the Ice Kingdom. Finn and Jake explore and find some imagery of both softness and some sort of free apocalypse university. Ultimately discovering it was created by Magic Woman or Betty, mind holding with Wire Princess who was trying to reverse engineer an AI with love magic that confused her Simon or whatever. She inadvertently mind well then accidentally creating the semi-physical maze with her magic powers and in turn realizing what Wire Princess was, in fact, not only functional and aware this whole time, but she also had a slow down perception of time. Finn and Jake severed the link after fighting some techno mic nightmares. Magic Woman, despite only having mind mode for a day, has spent a whole year and appears distraught. But this is only momentary, as she declares that her accelerated madness means that her magic will grow exponentially stronger and runs off appearing to have a plan. Finn and Jake are worried about Wire Princess going haywire, <laughs> the pun is pointed out, but she clarifies her voice box is working now but not much else, that actually since she didn't have or understand emotions for most of her aware existence, she was just fine then. She then goes on a beautiful monologue about how since she's now bound on to one, she finally truly understands emotional beings and their complex needs. She renames herself Wire Knight and downs her consciousness in onto Finn's arm. The later episode has been on Wire the Night, debating the trolley problem. Adventure Time, Distant Lands, or Fiat on a Cake. 
Why not make yourself a new body and she's serving ungodly the amount of something in it. Oh gosh. That escalated horribly. Why? I hate that. It was so good and you ruined it. Freaking internet. God damn it, Bobby. So I just had to get the Hank Hill voice. Dale, the NRA is a Washington, D.C. based organization. Are you telling me you support Washington, D.C.? That's a thinker. This soon ruined my life, by the way. I say that's a thinker literally all the time. I'm always thinking about stuff. <coughs> oh. Oh no. I sneeze. I'm gonna get clipped by that Vita over Twitter account. <laughs> I don't think, anyway. Grandma got run over. Despacito. Hope a Gangnam style Christmas Eve. You might say go and whip and nay nay. But I'm cousin my home with Minecraft Steve. Very true. Popular average monkey learns one a new thing a day, so this is incorrect. Curious George. True. Curious Gorg. Hmm. He's not like that in real life. Stop. Is it not real? Yes. Are people on it living? For the most part, yes. Then he's like that in real life. All he ever did was give him a place where he didn't have to worry about being punched in the face when he says what he thinks. He's not like, like that in real life just means he's not like that when... And there are repercussions. Fool. Oh jeez, I can't... Read that without zooming in, so I'm gonna just do this. It's just easier to do this. Less effort. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna be great. Random guy in shit tier Iron Arbor shows up one day saying a dragon is burning down the city. Don't know why the guards let him in. Figure I could throw another body at my court wizard so I shove him over. Comes back with arrows sticking out, out of his body holding a tablet. Not for my court wizard like it's nothing. Harry reports someone killed uh, literally every bandit, rat, wolf, and rabbit between here and the spot he was sent. I now need to get this petty mutant lunatic, lunatic murderer out of my city. Dragon shows us up. Oh, thank the gods. Send the guy out on a suicide mission to kill the dragon. Hey, my worries. He comes back, apparently having killed a dragon and eaten its soul. According to reports, just stood there and let the dragon turn worried while uh, chugging an addictive and dangerous health potions he made himself. Now standing in front of me, eating an entire bushel of apples, two loaves of bread, and an entire side of beef while everyone looks on in horror and disgust. Tell him he needs to climb the tallest mountain in Skyrim and stay with the Greybeards. He leaves without a word. Hopefully that's the last I'll see of him. It isn't. He will learn more words. And he will shout them. You're gonna regret at, at, at what you did. <laughs> Crystals were banishing someone. Any of them, if you throw them hard enough. This here is my banishing rock. Truly. Oh no.
Link, this is a picture. <sighs> oh, jeez. Finding phrases to use when something goes wrong instead of joking and saying, I'm going to off myself. I'm going to kill God. I'm going to delete my blog. I'm going to explode. I'm going to blow up this entire website. I'm going to become the Joker. This is going to be my villain origin story. Feel free to add it on. I'm going to do some sort of acrobatic freaking per I'll tell you, off the handle. This one wins. Of sec police. Not to be insensitive, but some of the Salem witch trials were so funny. Bitches like, I saw her at the Devil's Sacrament! Girl, what were you doing at the Devil's Sacrament? What the fuck happens in Homestuck? Oh, you know. Sprung. <laughs> Acrobatic freaking for you off the handle, but the gray area is unaware or the handle. The question is your brother's as father's sword and it's embedded in your our brother's as father's chest. What? Thanks, Ryder Lord. It is second nature to, hopes, to us hopes like bloggers. So it's easy to forget that the average Tumblr user probably only knows the sword is like you have a corpse and that it's his dead brother. And biological father. Of course, of course. If we were trying to compensate for it, X was in anything rather really overestimate the average person's familiarity with their field. That's my question. What the heck is Homestuck? I have heard about it for years and I am scared to look it up now. What's Homestuck? Is it like Gontrov? The fuck is Gontrov? A spring flower sprouts deep in the old growth of the forest. What is Homestuck? it asks. Is it like Gontrov? The red woods groan in laughter, in pain. Perhaps they forgot that they too once sprouted on a crisp spring morning. Perhaps they remember. How is he's, he his brother and biological father? Please. That one I can explain. You see, I know a thing or two about... Pure red dog, so it's called inbreeding. I didn't know about it because I watched the adverts and everything about pure red dogs when I was younger. Dave is a genetic offspring but was adopted as a little brother rather than a son. All things considered, one of the less convoluted aspects of homosex family tree. Less convoluted? Don't worry about it. Relevant to this blog, I think. 150,000 notes. I think I'm proud of this. I think I'm allowed to be proud of this. Full identification. Each fork or soup bowl in either eggshell or panna cotta, featuring the very spot we're available on the website Lucky Chimes. Did you just know this? That's what I want to know. I still don't even know what Homestuck is. And I read all of that, and I still don't know what the heck a homesick is. Is it like... Is it like me? <sighs> My therapist is that I decided that from now on, when I'm thinking something negative about myself, I'm going to imagine that Donald Trump is saying it. Because it's really easy for me to just tell him to fuck off. Example. Trump. Your thighs are fat. Me. Fuck you and your fucking wall. I think we're onto something here. This is probably the best coping skill I've ever seen. And I am 10 billion percent going to use it too. 
It wasn't fun when Senko o said for the billionth time. It's not fun when you say it. No, it's Senku, sorry. Yes, Dr. Stone literally ruined the award 10 billion for me. Reblog if this was work on you. Sub, you look mentally care. Freak. <laughs> Sub, you look mentally ill. I was to take care of you. I have a cat, by the way. Damn. A girl I liked to convince me to stab bad, so I did. Felt guilty for a bit, then probably forgot about it and walked around with the murder weapon for a couple of hours, going about my business, walking my dog. Eventually, I was caught by a place clothes officer who asked me why I had bought a knife. I told him I was looking after for my uh, bogan cousin, and yes, he, he said, "And you're under arrest." And I was like, "No, I'm not. Watch this." Then I woke up. <laughs> I didn't read the name, so I was like, what? That's a goddamn power move. Don't worry, guys. I have a plan. Well, I'm hops. I've left the game. Dang, that is quite a power move. Hey, God. One plus connect the dots. One plus how. Two plus I wish. Three plus you. Four plus spend as much. Five time six. Oh, it's not plus. Four six. Oh, thinking. Seven about me. Eight as you. Nine spent. Ten trying. Eleven to read. 12 this poem, I mean this, and 13 poem. What the fuck is this thing meant to be? 0 out of 10, worst thought to dot ever, would not recommend. You've got to connect the last one with the first one. All respect for pillow princesses, but why is this person at Cinder saying she's a pillow princess for looking for other pillow princesses? Girl who is doing the work! And so they were are both bottoms. Cannot believe no one I never replies has added this. I have to do all the work around here. It's so they can play the Sims together. Pil two pillow phrases is caught at a sleepover. Anti work icons? The competition for a uh, uh, top is fierce. Teaming up to maximize their joint sleigh. They're making a pillow fort. What is a princess without a kingdom? They're laying in bed holding hands like, like otters while wearing fancy lingerie. What's so hard to understand? Pillow fight! Where you get to claim I'm the one and only top in the area. Great work in the tags, everyone. Oops. <laughs> Throwback to the time my classes professor as. Does anyone know who Sappho is? And I really replied, She's the OG lesbian! And my professor yelled, Exactly! And wrote the OG lesbian on the whiteboard. Beautiful. Imagine being Skylar White in my, in the my Little Pony universe. This one has a blank leg all his life, and then one day he comes home with a chemical formula to format, permanently branded on his ass. Could you imagine the explanation he'd come up with? The fact is can and that funny version of Walter White exists in MLP friendship is magic. I <laughs> I just texted myself to see if my texts were working. Forgot I texted myself, received that message, then replied to myself with, Who is this? And then I received that message, two seconds later, and it was like, Whoa, who is that? 
literally the stupidest thing I have ever done. I should text myself, see if I'm still alive. I'm quite sure I am. A lot of other universes. Hang on. Can't quite read that one. Loading, loading, please hurry up. Then Radcliffe's agent. Hello, Harry Potter. Hello, would you like to be in a movie? It is very strange. Is it very strange? Yes. Then, yes. When can you get here? I'm in your yard climbing trees as we speak. This is exactly how he got the role of, of playing Weird Al. Not far off, actually. Al caught to him and Radcliffe said he was very pleased with Vlad, but why I him and Al said, he's seeing Radcliffe sing the element song next to a confused Ryan on the Graham Norton show like 15 years ago when this guy gets it. <laughs> Yes, he truly does get it. Digging a hole in the backyard, all endings, toys, all bosses, play in the creek, no damage. Berry picking, S rank. Dripping off the street off the swigs, no deaths run. Having gay parents is horrible. I mean, you either get twice the usual amount of dad jokes, or get stuck into an infinite loop of go ask your mom. These are the kind of gay jokes that are funny. <laughs> they are. I love them. No thanks, Satan. I don't celebrate your birthday. The birthday is... The day that the Earth was created. Are you saying that that Earth was created on fucking Halloween? Damn. No, but real talk. Okay, I went to school in Georgia, and I even had teachers tell me that I shouldn't celebrate Halloween because it was the devil's birthday, and I got suspended for four days because I wrote an essay titled, You're Earl Dumb. The devil wasn't even born. The story of All Hallows Eve, and I talked about the history of Halloween. How it was a pagan celebration to venerate and appease the dead, and how the devil was technically an angel that was cast from heaven, and because angels were created by God, they weren't born, therefore the devil couldn't have a birthday. <clears throat> my principal was so concerned for me because I was in third grade, and he got mad at my mom for raising such a disrespectful hedonist. This sick child. She brought me ice cream and let me watch cartoons while I was out of school. Does that principal even know what hedonistic means? I don't know either, but it doesn't matter. It's stupid to call a child that. Oh wait, no, I have an idea. Have you considered not being a little bitch? So I have the energy to be a huge bitch, but then I run out of it again and crawl back to bed. Gotta learn how to ration the bitch in it. Is that way instead of being sometimes. I'm seeing a little bitch and sometimes being a huge bitch, you won't. You can just be a regular sized bitch all the time. I'm gonna tell my therapist that my new recovery goal is to figure out how to reach equilibrium and be medium bitch at all times. I'm not back on my bullshit, because I never got off of it to begin with. My bullshit has continued at a steady rate without interruption. Never stop the e madness. Why does John Constantine have a kazoo? I didn't want to encourage smoking my blog, so I changed the cigarette to a kazoo. I don't... Whatever. What the fuck was that?
humans are weird. So this is in a bit of a, what if humans were the weird ones going around Tumblr at the moment, and Earth Day, it got me thinking, Earth is a wonky place. The axis, the axis tilts, the orbit wobbles, and the ground speed is bolted rock, for goodness sakes. What if what makes humans weird is just our capacity to survive? What if the all the other life-bearing plants are these mild Mediterranean climates with no seasons, no tectonic plates, and no intense weather? What if several species, including humans, land on a world and humans are all SCORE! Earth-like world! Let's go explain before we get it out competed. And the planet starts offing the other aliens left and right. Electric storms, hypothermia, tornadoes, and humans are just there, counting seconds between flashes, having snowball fights, and just surviving. To paraphrase one of my favorite bits of a, a Humans Are Awesome fiction mega post, you don't know you're from a death world until you leave it. For a ton of reasons, I really like the idea of Earth being Space Australia. Alien, I'm sorry, what did you say your couple old, old temperature range is? Human, honestly, we can tolerate anywhere from negative 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, but we prefer the 0 to 30 range. I'm sorry, did you just list temperatures below freezing? Yeah, but most of us prefer to throw on scarves or jackets at those temperatures. It could be a bit nippy. Hmm. Other uh, human? Nah, mate. I knew this guy in college roof here used to wear anything past his knees and elbows, so it was at least he's minus 20 at that. Yeah, that's called uh, someone I'm from, I think it's Minnesota or Missouri or whatever. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows someone like that. And did you say 50 Celsius? As in halfway to boiling? Uh, yeah, yes, it sucks. We sat right everywhere, and God help you to touch a seat belt buckle, but yes. We've got like 50 uninhabitable planets that we think you might enjoy. You're telling me you that uh, you have settlements on islands with active volcanism? Well, yeah. I'm not about to tell Iceland and Hawaii how to live their lives. Actually, it's kind of a tourist attraction. What? The molten rock? Well, yeah. It's not every day you see mountains spew out liquid rocks. The best one is Yellowstone, though. All these hot springs and geysers from the super volcano. You actively seek out super volcanoes? Shit, man, we swim in the groundwater near them. Sounds like the damn trilogy by Alan D. In Foster. And you say the poles of your world that could get at as low as negative 100 with a wind chill. Oh. Yep, with blizzards you can't see through every other day, just about. Amazing. When did you. Managed to send drones that could survive such temperatures. Well, actually, what? We <clears throat> kind of sent people. <clears throat> what? We sent. No, yeah, I heard you. I just. What? You sent humans. To place 100 degrees below of freezing. Yeah. And they didn't die. Well, the first few did. <coughs> oh, I got off now. People died of the cold. And your solution was to send more people.
But surely you have records of volcanic activity doing tremendous damage to human settlements. Yep, Pompeii is legendary. Entire cities went, towns buried under lava, people's brains boiled in the first rush of heat, loads more killed by falling pumice. Ah, good, they learned their lesson and then built there again. Well, are you seriously telling me that this, this legendary volcano, that this volcano is legendary for killing several urban car innovations and you built on top of it again? In our defense, it hasn't done it since. What about earthquake prone areas? Tell me you're at least vaguely sensible about those. Oh yeah, after the first major earthquake that flattens the city, we'll build them better. <laughs> Sometimes it starts to sound like humans are actually just from Florida. But you know. Minus the Nazi part. Alright, let's see what this next post is. This might have to be the last one, because this is really freaking long. The thing about art is that it was always supposed to be about us. About the humanness of us. The impossible and beautiful reality that we, for centuries, have stood still, transfixed by music. That we can close our eyes and cry about the same book passage. The events of which aren't real and never happened. Theater in Shakespeare's time was as real as it is now. We all laugh at the same cue, pursued by bear. Separated hundreds of years of heart. Three years ago, my housemates were jamming outdoors, just messing with their, around with their instruments, mostly just making noise. Our neighbors, shy, cautious, a little sheepish, sat down and started playing. I already know how it happened. I was somehow in charge of dancing barefoot and laughing. I looked up. Our yard was full of people. Kids stacked on the shoulders of parents, old couples holding hands. Someone had brought sidewalk chalk and fr our front walk had become a, a riot of color. Someone ran in with a flute and played the most astounding solo I have ever heard in my life. Upright and wiggling, skipping as she did so. She only paused because violin and play was kicking his heels up as, as, and she was laughing too hard to continue. Two weeks ago, my friend and I met in the basement of her pirate complex so she could work out a piece of choreography. We have a language barrier. I'm not as good at ASL so as I like to be. I'm still learning. So we communicate mostly through the notes app in this strange secret language of dancers. We have the same movement and vocabulary and the two of us cracking jokes at each other, giggling. There were kids in the basement too who have been playing soccer so we took up the far corner of the room. One by one, they made their slow way over like feral cats. They laid down, belly fly against the floor, just watching. My friend and I were not in tutus. We were in slouchy skirts and leggings and socks. Nothing fancy, but when I asked the kids, uh, would you like to dance too, they were immediately on their feet and spinning. I love with pe when people dance with abandon, the wild and leggy fervor of children. I think it is gorgeous. The results showed up eventually, and a few of them said, Hey, let's not bother the nice ladies. But they weren't bothering us. They were just having fun. So a few of the adults started dancing awkwardly along, and then most of the adults. Some brought down out of bare sound system. Someone opened a watermelon and started handing out slices. It was 8 p.m. on a Tuesday, and nothing about that day was particularly special. We might as well party. Sheesh. One time, I hosted a free paint-along party. And about 20 adults worked quietly while I taught them how to paint, paint Nessie. One time, I taught community dance classes and so many people showed up, we had to move the whole thing outside. We used chairs and coat racks to, to balance. One time, I showed up to a random band playing in, in a random location. And the th whole thing got packed so quickly, we had to open every door and window in the place. I don't think I can tell you how much people want to be making art and engaging with art. They want to desperately. Some people would be stunning in ours, but they are lied to and told. 
from a very young age that art only matters if it is planned, purposeful, beautiful, that if you have an idea, you need to be able to express it perfectly. This is not true. You don't only get one, you don't only get only one chance to communicate. You can spend a lifetime trying to display exactly one thing you can never quite language. You can just express the exclamation point, exclamation point, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, this, in this, in this, of being alive. That is something none of us can really have a full grasp on creating. Even when we can't make what we want, God, it feels good to, freaking good to just try. And even just enjoying other artists, art inherently rewards the act of participating. I wasn't raised wealthy. Whatever I made fun about art, someone at least says something along the lines of, well, some of us aren't that lucky. I am not lucky. I am dedicated. I have a chronic condition. My hands are constantly in pain. I am not neurotypical, nor was I raised safe. I worked five to seven jobs while well, uh, some of these people, while well, some of these memories happened. I chose art because as it mattered to me more than anything on this fucking planet. I would work 80 hours a week just so I could afford to write in three of them. And I'm telling you, if you are called to make art, you're called to alter the part of you that is human. You do not have to be good at it. You don't have to have, to have enormous amounts of privilege. You can just give yourself permission. You can just say, I'm going to make something now. I didn't go out and make it. Rock will, it won't be good though. That is okay. I don't make good things every time either. Besides, who decides what good even is? You aren't called to make something because you want it to be good. You're called to make something because it is a basic entrance. Instinct. You were taught to judge its worth and overvalue perfection. You were doing something impossible. A God's ability from nothing springs creation. A few months ago, I found a piece of sidewalk chalk and started drawing. Within an hour, I had somehow collected a small classroom of young children. Their adults often brought their own chalk. I looked up around 15 travelers had joined me from around the block. We drew scrangly unicorns and messed up flowers, and one girl asked me to draw Charizard. I'm not good at drawing. I basically drew an orc with wings. You would have thought I drew her the Mona Lisa. She dragged her mother over and pointed and look and said, Look! Look what she drew for me! And in the moment, I admit I flinched. Sorry, I don't. But the writer just screamed at me. He's a beautiful. And then she, he, he sat down and started drawing. Someone took a picture of it. It was in the local newspaper. The summary underneath said, Joyful and spontaneous artwork from local artist spring ings up in public gallery. In the picture, a little girl covered in shock dust us as her head thrown back delighted, laughing. Right, the layer, the warm up. This is longer than I wanted. I really considered removing that part about myself and what I went through, but I think it really fucking bothers me that every time I talk about being an artist, people all assume I just like had the skill and ability to drop everything and pay for grad school. Like, sir, I grew up poor. My house wasn't a safe space. I gave up a free ride to law school for this because I chose it. Was it freaking hard? Was I choosing the hard thing? Yes. But we need to stop seeing artists as lazy layabouts that can afford to just sit around and create. When many, if not most of us, are not like that. We have to work our fucking asses off. Hard work, long, and hard work. Part of valuing artists is recognizing the amount we sacrifice to make our art. Because it doesn't just, like, happen to us. All this, by the way, it really has to do ooh, ooh, with true talent. Speaking of someone with the chronic condition, I hate when people are like, you have it easy. Like, actively, as I'm writing this, my hands are actively hurting me. I haven't been posted because my left hand was crawling into a claw for the last week. This isn't fucking luck. After a certain point, it's not even talent. It's dedication and sacrifice. You get to flounce around in the life is a narrative that is a direct result of capitalism. Imagine if we said that about literally any other profession. Oh, so you gave up 10 years of your life to be a doctor? You sacrifice having a social life and you get super in debt? 
Units of work countless hours. I know ought to be thankless. Well, I wish I was that lucky. We should be applying that object to landlords only. Oh, your mom and dad gave you the money to buy a house. I don't know you did what as painted white and rented, huh? Literally. Only landlords get to deserve this sort of, of scrutiny. And the billionaires are, are just simply exploiting other people or that just simply get their money from family inheritance. Like Trump, Elon. I really don't know about the others. Some of them are just really evil, like Bezos. <sighs> Alright. Alright. So we're just gonna do this one last post and then we are done for today. So yeah, Catherine Regulus has completely changed since then. Nowadays, uh, instead of there was a crying baby on the bus, you would say, me when I'm being loud and and I'm in a in a being loud and annoying competition, my opponent is crying baby on a bus, and he posts this picture of Squidward. Oh, a uh, Squidward is a guy from a cartoon, reanimated corpse of John Wilkes Booth, has been staring angrily at the at a penny for the last fifteen minutes and not listened to a word I've said. <laughs> Explaining modern phenomena to historical people is one of my favorite genres of a post. What's the difference between a bike people and unicorns? I could see unicorns on movies and TV. I told her to my mom and she was like, that's not... Yes, it is. Also, unicorns on TV are called unicorns, not horses that don't like labels. Horses that don't like labels. So true. Yeah. Very unfortunate. And that was our last Umbler where we tumbled into art. A long rant about art. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I think I have something in mind to do for tomorrow. It's going to have to do some extra work for it. Until then, goodbye!